I'm doing it. I'm installing it. This is it. The SSD end game. 15 gigabytes per second, 8 terabytes, PCI Express Gen 4. This is the SSD that I was waving around on stream being like, oh, that's a nice SSD you've got there. PlayStation 5, be a shame if someone came along and absolutely shrecked it. It may be four times the price of a PlayStation 5 all by itself. It may require another three grand in additional hardware in order to utilize it properly. But I will be damned if some PS5 is gonna come along and be faster than my PC. And this video is brought to you by Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can instantly see current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off Glasswire at the link in the video description. In case it wasn't already, I want to make this clear. The fact that this SSD is really fast or whatever is not a genuine knock against the PS5. The PS5 is expected to cost somewhere between $400 and $600 for an entire gaming system, including a high-speed SSD. By contrast, in order to unlock the full potential of this puppy right here, I need to upgrade my gaming rig, which is already a Ryzen 3rd Gen 12 core processor. The reason for it is not necessarily that I need the extra cores, although we can talk a little bit more about that later, but rather that I need the extra PCI Express lanes because this card requires a full PCI Express Gen 4 16X link in order to reach full speed. That is the same interface that would be used on a high-end next generation graphics card and Threadripper is just the only way to do it. Let's start with the motherboard choice. In the past, I wouldn't describe myself as an ASUS diehard or anything like that, but they've definitely been my default go-to over the years. This actually changed for not only this upgrade, but actually the last one as well, because uh, Gigabyte and ASRock are the only ones as far as I know that have solutions for Thunderbolt, which is what this little add-in card is right here. There we go. On AMD platforms. And as some of you might know, I actually run my system in a separate room from where my monitor and my gaming peripherals and everything are so that I can completely isolate the noise from my rig and not have to listen to it. So Thunderbolt is how I actually get high-speed connectivity to my computer. That makes the TRX 4D Desin Air from Gigabyte basically the default choice for me because it's got four 16X PCI Express Gen 4 slots with two of them actually being wired up at 16X. So right there's the graphics card, there's the storage, and then in one of these other two, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this Titan Ridge card which has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on it for a total of 80 gigabit per second. Actually, I don't know, it might be a single controller. I think it's a single controller, it might be 40 combined. It's frustrating, you know, it's a generally accepted truth that Thunderbolt is flakier on PC than it is on Mac, but the PC makers really don't do themselves any favors. This board literally comes with that Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card, but to my knowledge, the board is not actually Intel Thunderbolt 3 certified, which is why it doesn't say Thunderbolt 3 on the box design anywhere, it just says includes 40 gigabit per second GC Titan Ridge add-in card. The instructions don't say which slot to put it on because that can actually matter. A lot of the time it's recommended to install it in a slot that is hooked up to the chipset rather than directly to the CPU. So I'm just gonna be kind of guessing as far as that goes. And apparently, oh, actually no, okay. I think there is, a cable for it somewhere in here. It's just not mentioned anywhere in the manual. And <laughs> Apparently this motherboard comes with uh, the same SSD carrier that I was going to install. That's amusing. Enough about that. Let's go ahead and get the CPU installed. Now, aside from the 88 lanes of PCI Express Gen 4 connectivity that third gen Ryzen Threadripper CPUs have, I also wanted to make sure that when it comes to competing with the PS5, I'm set up to handle, you know, compressed game data. 
Now, in their presentation about the SSD architecture of the PlayStation 5, Mark Cerny said that in order to get equivalent performance to the dedicated decompression chip that they built into their custom chip, you would need anywhere from, I think he said somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 Zen 2 CPU cores. So in order to make sure that I completely overkill that mark, I went from 12 cores to 32 cores. So I'll be able to decompress game data for days here. Just gotta make sure I install the CPU correctly. First one, then two, and then three. This is one heck of a memory kit G-Skill sent over. Now, 3200 megahertz is not crazy fast, but on Ryzen processors, there's actually really not much benefit to going beyond a certain speed. It's the latencies that impress me. These are rated for 14, 14, 14, 34 at just 1.35 volts. That's really tight. I just realized this thing only has gigabit networking. How does that make any sense for a designer? $600 motherboard. Now for the worst part of any upgrade, draining the water cooling loop. This is why I knew it. I knew I shouldn't have gone hardline. I was just like, well, whatever. It's been three years between upgrades this time. I'll probably go another three years. And then I just, I had to have a faster SSD than the PlayStation 5. It's the ultimate first world temper tantrum. All right, let's drain this thing. This isn't even my dumbest idea ever. Oh, who's the idiot now? I gotta undo this cable tie, lttstore.com. Oh, hi there. Um, yeah, it's peeing on me. Okay, what if I tilted it up more? I'm gonna hold this. Can you lower the table, please? Whew. Okay, fantastic. Also, this tube appears to be empty, which means this is gonna be a cinch. Yep, I only put three motherboard screws in. Well, okay then. Look at that. Whew. How much water's left in here? Wow, none. Outstanding. So I hadn't actually checked this before we started, but it turns out, oh yeah. The top PCIe slot on this board is the same as the one that came out. So this run can just go right back where it was. Just gotta give this a little, you know, wiggly wiggle, make sure everything's still in there. Give this a little tighty tighten, make sure that's still in there. Bam! Graphics card back in. Oh wow. This is gonna be so much easier than I thought. Look at this. All I've gotta do, as long as I don't overdo it, is shave down this tube until this lines up with that. This is how confident I am. I'm loading up the collars and the O-rings, like I'm, I'm ready. Well, this was almost uneventful to the point of being boring, wasn't it? This could actually work. I'm not a huge fan of this Corsair filling thing because like the seal here is not perfect. So when you squeeze it too hard, it can make a bit of a mess, but this seems to be actually working. Check this out. It's a little slow, but I'm gonna try and fill it as much as I possibly can. It's test boot time. Starting with the good news, it doesn't leak. The bad news is that I've got an error code 60 and it's not firing it up. It appears to be, oh, okay, that's helpful. Uh, it appears to be a DRAM issue. It would be very unfortunate if I had to remount the CPU in the socket. I really should have tested that before I put the water cooling back in place. Oh, I'm so upset right now. Wait a second, are these tubes empty? I think these tubes are empty. It's not quite full yet, okay. I might be okay, this might not be that bad. Uh, that's a lot of thermal compound. <laughs> to be clear, this is not something that I recommend. Well, that was bound to happen eventually. My pump is still plugged in. <sighs> At least I said I didn't recommend it. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's just, it's just distilled water. Like it's actually gonna dry and it will actually be fine. It's just, 
Um, thankfully, the memory was over here. My laptop escaped completely unscathed. That could have been so much worse. Theoretically, that won't happen again. Holy crap, it's not unplugged. Okay, to be clear, I don't recommend running a CPU with no heatsink at all like this. I'm just trying to see if I get any kind of post whatsoever, and then I'm gonna immediately turn it off. It does look promising. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What's this B0? I wanna see B0. Tried mounting that 3970X a couple more times. Uh, keep getting postcode B0. No further time to diagnose this. I got games to play this weekend. So I guess we're going for our 24 core, but that's okay. Cause that still gives me, you know, eight extraneous cores I totally don't need to, uh, you know, decompress PlayStation 5 games or whatever. Enough of that then. Let's install an SSD, shall we? The Titan Ridge card goes in here. It's got display port in on the back. So that comes straight out of your graphics card into the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 card. Um, that way you can actually run displays over Thunderbolt 3. Otherwise, you know, it's not a display adapter, so it wouldn't have any way of outputting that. So you gotta kind of tie that in in a kludgy way with an external cable. Got the SSD. Oh, please tell me I'm gonna be able to get this in here. It might've been better to put this in before. Uh, you know what, I might need to pull this out. Dang it! It's like full height, full length card. It's not exactly easy to get in when you've got hardline water cooling over it. It's so unnecessary, everything about this. Why am I even doing this? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw my other SSD in here so we can do some quick benchmarking on this one without actually loading an OS on it. So I'm booted to my old drive. This is my one terabyte SSD. And then you can actually see each of the two terabyte SSDs showing up individually. That's because we need to do some BIOS configuration before they will all be rated together. There's an internal connector here for Thunderbolt. And I have no idea what the purpose of it is because I haven't seen this on other Thunderbolt add-in cards, but there's a USB 2 cable as well. And that evidently goes into a little USB 2 header here on the back of the board. Well, it can just sit there for now. The last thing I need, and I alluded to these before, is these little mini display port to display port cables. So each of these will plug into one of the display port outputs from my graphics card and go into a display port input on the Thunderbolt card, like that. Comes with two. Boop. Now to configure booting to the new SSD. The first thing we need to do is go to SATA configuration, then NVMe RAID mode enabled. Then we've got to give it a quick restarty start. I also enabled Thunderbolt while I was at it because I put the Thunderbolt card in there. We manually enabled bifurcation on our PCI Express 16X slot. Now we need to go into RAID Expert 2, which only shows up if you enable PCIe RAID. And we're gonna go ahead and not do that. I'm going RAID 0 here, boys. I don't put any valuable data on here. It's just gonna be full of games. Physical disks. Windows installed in basically the normal way, and here it is. 7.21 terabytes of usable space in Windows at PCI Express Gen 4 by 16 speeds. And how Gen 4 by 16 are they? Woo Wow! 13.88 gigabytes per second writes and just shy of, actually, oh, 13 and a half gigabytes per second reads, depending on the size of the file transfer. That is absolutely freaking ridiculous. And it's, a, it's actually possible that if we just take some larger ones, like let's do another run from four megs to uh, 32 megs. Here we go. Let's see how fast these puppies go. Whew. That is something else. I mean, it's really too bad that you need so much CPU in order to just like low process it. Mind you, you got 24 cores. It actually doesn't hit it that hard. <laughs> oh man. That's it. You heard it here first. I'm never upgrading this machine again. 24 cores ought to be enough for anybody. Maybe, you know, if I need more than 64 gigs of RAM, throw another kit of memory in there. But eight terabytes of 12 and a half to 14 gigabyte per second storage. I think it's fair to say that ought to be enough for anybody. Is that like, you know, what? In 10 years, 20 years? Am I gonna need more than that? Probably. Oh, shut up. There's no way. I mean, we're still gonna be working with text documents, you know? Oh, that's kind of crazy. This machine actually has the performance 
to do the same things the PS5 can do with like texture streaming literally while you're rendering and moving around in the game. And all it cost was 10X the price? Yeah, that's not so bad. Not as bad as this segue to our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Drop.com and the Sennheiser PC37X gaming headset. It features angled drivers and an open back design, and the drivers actually come from the same family as the HD598 and HD600 series headphones. It offers excellent stereo imaging and locational accuracy, and comes with a noise-canceling microphone. They've sold over 40,000 of these things, and new users who sign up to the website are going to get 20 bucks off their purchase if it's over $50, which these headphones would be. So go check them out at the link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe actually check out the old series from when we showed the design and manufacturing of this case for my personal rig. It was a pretty fun little project. We're gonna have that link down below as well.